Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome back to a brand new week of AutoLine Daily. Boy, is it good to be back in the studio. You know, the reason I was out last week is that I was test driving the new Kia Cadenza. We'll have more about the car in the near future, but here's a quick snapshot. The Cadenza is a full-size sedan that will compete against cars like the Toyota Avalon, Nissan Maxima, Ford Taurus, and Chevy Impala. It's actually based on a stretched version of the Kia Optima and equipped with a 3.3 liter V6, whereas the Optima only comes with a four-cylinder engine. Base price of the Cadenza is $36,000. Fully loaded, it goes for $42,000. And here's my Autoline insight. The Cadenza probably is not going to win any Car of the Year awards, but it is a nice sedan. The best thing it's got going for it is the styling. Another great job from Kia's head designer, Peter Schreier. And it comes with a boatload of standard equipment that's going to make the other full-size cars it competes against break out in a cold sweat. Like I said, we'll have more info in the days to come. Whoa, the Wall Street bulls are starting to run with General Motors. The company's stock price hit $33.42 on Friday, and that's the first time in two years GM shares closed above its $33 IPO. Bloomberg reports that analysts think the price will continue to rebound thanks to 20 new models hitting the showrooms in the U.S. this year, including its hyper-profitable pickups. They also like how the company is performing in China, and yes, even in Europe. By the way, if you want more information about GM's finances, check out last week's episode of AutoLine with GM CFO Dan Ammon. It's a good show. Late last year, the Chinese government slashed purchases of imported luxury vehicles in order to curb spending. Now Bloomberg reports this has caused the price of imported vehicles to drop because of less demand. The average price of imported cars fell by over 3% in April. But while luxury sales are going soft, Japanese automakers are showing signs of improvement in China thanks to a wave of new products. Before that island dispute between Japan and China last year, Japanese brands' market share was 20%. By February of this year, that had dropped to only 12.5%, but that share crept up to 15% in March. Sales for Toyota, Mazda, and Honda were still down in April, but not by as much as before, and Nissan actually saw sales increase last month. The joint venture between Nissan and Mitsubishi that started two years ago is showing off its first model. It's a mini car built for Japan that will carry the names Nissan Days and Mitsubishi EK Wagon. They're said to have a high quality interior feel, best in class fuel economy, and will feature a touchscreen air conditioning system. They go on sale in June with a wagon version coming next year. And this report is for all of you who, five years ago, told me the American market would never recover from the Great Recession. Well, according to Bank of America Merrill Lynch, light vehicle sales will hit 18 million units in the U.S. by 2018. And of course, that would smash the all-time sales record. Merrill Lynch points to the continued economic recovery and predicts there will be more jobs, more miles driven, more product launches, and easier credit at lower rates. Hey, is this a great time to be alive or what? But I guess that means that traffic is not going to get any better anytime soon. Augmented reality is starting to show up everywhere these days, and it's only a matter of time before it shows up in cars. Well, actually, it is already showing up in cars. The Corvette racing team is using it to good effect, and we'll show you what it's all about right after this. Proven on the track and on roads around the world, Borg Warner turbochargers improve fuel economy and reduce emissions without sacrificing performance. Borg Warner, official turbocharger supplier to the IZOD IndyCar Series. 
Do you know what augmented reality is? If not, we'd describe it as something to look at in the real world, but then use a computer to enhance or add something to that view. Well, it's not new technology. Augmented reality, or AR as they call it, is now being used for a lot more than showing sports scores on the bottom of your TV screen during a game. Sean McElroy has this report. One form of augmented reality we especially like is this new rear view radar camera that was designed for the Corvette C6R that runs in the American Le Mans Racing Series. Developed by the Pratt & Miller Racing Team, it's a rear view camera system that can track up to 32 objects, will display useful information on a screen mounted to the dash, and even works at night and in the rain, which are by far the most dangerous racing conditions. Just think of the driver who has been racing in those conditions for two hours straight and how much it could help them. By using different colors and symbols, he or she, at a mere glance, knows how many cars are behind, how close they are, their closing speeds, and even which class they're in. For instance, a green marker shows a car is falling back, a yellow marker means a car is traveling at a similar rate of speed, and a red marker indicates a car is closing the gap and about to overtake. When it's red, the system will show a blinking arrow pointing to the side you are being passed on. And to differentiate racing classes, an extra line in the marker indicates the approaching vehicle is in a faster class. The Pratt & Miller system is only one of its kind currently in racing, and it does have plans to sell the technology to other teams in the future, although pricing has yet to be determined. Augmented reality is going to start showing up in production cars, too, before this decade's out. It'll be used to alert drivers to upcoming road hazards, traffic situations, and will even be incorporated into the navigation system. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.